Guru Dev, Guru Dev. 
आजाद की जाए हरे कृष्णा वेलकम एवरी वन टू दिस संडे लॉफ इज प्रोग्राम ऑर्गेनाइज बाई कॉन्स्टोल सो नाइस टू सी यू इच एंड एवरी वन ऑफ यू एंड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वेरी वेरी हैप्पी पाकिस्तान को सहायता दसी so auspicious that we are gathered here on an auspicious day of ekadashi at the same time we are studying bhagavad gita glorifying lord krishna we are very lucky ones very lucky ones so we are on 8.2 that is chapter bhagavad gita chapter 8 text number 2 page number 346 of this yellow bhagavad gita book that is So please repeat after me. Adiyaksa katham kotra, dehesmin madhusudana, prayana kalecha katham, nyeyosi niyatatma bi, adiyagnaha katha kotra. देहेस्मिन मधुसूदना प्रयाण काले च कथम न्येयुसी नियतात्मि अति यज्ञ कथम कोत्र देहेस्मिन मधुसूदना प्रयाण काले च कथम थैंक यू सो मच टू माताजीज एंड टू प्रभु अभियज्ञ कथम कोत्र देहेस्मिन मधुसूदन प्रयाण काले च कथम नियुसी नियतात्म अतिज्ञ कथम कोत्र देहेस्मिन मधुसूदना प्रयाण काले च कथम थैंक यू सो मच प्रभु एनीबडी वुड लाइक टू read the translation sure who is the lord of sacrifice and how does he live in the body o madhusudana and how can those engaged in devotional service know you at the time of death thank you so much prabhu can you repeat once again prabhu translation again who is the lord of sacrifice and how does he live in the body o madhusudana and how can those engaged in devotional service know you at the time of death thank you so much Anybody for the purport? Sure. Purport. Lord of sacrifice may refer to either Indra or Vishnu. Vishnu is the chief of the twenty-one demigods, including Brahma and Shiva, and Indra is the chief of the administrative demigods. Both Indra and Vishnu are worshipped by yajna performances, but here Arjuna asks, "Who is actually the Lord of yajna sacrifice, and how the Lord is residing within the body?" of the living entity arjuna addresses the lord as madhusudana because krishna was once killed a demon named madhu actually these questions which are of the nature of doubts should not have arisen in the mind of arjuna because arjuna is a krishna conscious devotee therefore these doubts are like demons since krishna is so expert in killing demons arjuna here addresses him as madhusudana so that krishna might kill the demonic doubts that arise in arjuna's mind 
Now the word Prayana Kali in this verse is very significant because whatever we do in life will be tested at the time of death. Arjuna is very anxious to know of those who are constantly engaged in Krishna consciousness. What should be their position at the final moment? At the time of death, all the bodily functions are disrupted and the mind is not in proper condition. Thus, disturbed by the bodily situation, one may not be able to remember the Supreme Lord. Maharaj Kulashekara, uh, a great devotee, prays, My dear Lord, just now I am quietly quite healthy and it is better that I die immediately so that the swan of my mind can seek entrance at the stem of your lotus feet. The metaphor is used because the swan, a bird of the water, takes pleasure in digging into the lotus flowers. Its sporting productivity is to enter the lotus flower. Maharaj Kulakshekara says to the Lord, Now my mind is undisturbed and I am quite healthy. If I die immediately thinking of your lotus feet, then I am sure that my performance of your devotional service will become perfect. But if I have to wait for my natural death, then I do not know what will happen because at the time the bodily functions will be disrupted, my throat will be choked up and I do not know whether I shall be able to chant your name. Better let me die immediately. Arjuna's questions how a person can fix his mind on Krishna's lotus feet at such a time. Arjuna. Thank you so much, Mother. Namom Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Paschatya Desutarine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadada Sri Vasadi Gauru Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Guru Venama Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Naram Chaivam Naram Chaiva Narutamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Udiraye Srunvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Sravana Kirtana Tadayantas Thoya Padrani Vidrunoti Suvat Satam Nasta Praya Suvabhadresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki Hari Om Mara Krishna Thank you so much once again for assembling here on the Sunday Love Feast program organized by Skon Stoil Again, happy Akadasi to everyone. We are so lucky. First of all, uh, I'm given this opportunity with the utmost mercy, unlimited mercy of Guru and Gauranga. Uh, although I don't consider myself to be worthy to be occupying this chair and speaking on Bhagavad Gita or any subject matter, I try to do that with the mercy of Guru and Gauranga for my own purification. So I pray and bless, I, I seek blessings of all the Vaishnavas present here uh, to bless me such that the words spoken are uh, pleasing to Guru and Gauranga. Hare Krishna. In the process, if there is any mistake or any shortcomings, please forgive me. So we are on 8.2. We just finished chapter 7 couple of weeks before uh, chapter 7 title was knowledge of the absolute whereas chapter 8 the title is attaining the supreme as we have said earlier uh, 
we form we we want to what is what's the ultimate goal of life uh, what's the ultimate goal of life go back to god go back to god right anything else remember krishna ji right now hari bol anything else These are all sadhanas. These are all processes of bhakti. Anything else? Last one. To re-establish relation with Lord. Perfect. That's also one of the one. Okay. I was the final one is uh, to attain the Krishna prema. To have unconditional love towards Krishna. Unconditional. In this material realm, everything is conditional. i serve you you serve me i give you this you give me this anything i do i will expect something because it's the material realm but in spiritual realm the love flows the reciprocation between the devotees of krishna and krishna is eternal constant and unconditional there is no strings attached so the goal of life is to achieve krishna prema Uh, and thereby of course as everyone says correct answers to go back home back to god head so that's the ultimate aim of life we saw in the past that if you want to love someone we need to know him or her is that okay is that correct yes. without knowing him or her we can't love anybody we we need to know his or her aptitudes likings nature uh, and all those things before we even make one step forward to start loving him or her this is the mundane world experience everybody agrees yes. okay so if we want to love krishna how can we love him without knowing him without knowing what does he like without knowing what does he expect from us without knowing what do we expect from him and what is our relationship all these things we need to establish before even we try to achieve the final goal of life which is krishna prema so krishna is so kind in uh, bhagavad gita uh, we are in the middle six chapters first six chapters are dealing with which yoga can anybody tell me First six, one to six, karma yoga. Seven to twelve is dealing with which yoga? Bhakti yoga. And then thirteen to eighteen is which one? Yama yoga. yoga. Perfect. So I think class is over. <laughs> Perfect. So we are in the middle. You know the sandwich. Paripurna Prabhu many times gives this example. The sandwich, the taste of the sandwich or the essence of the sandwich is where. between the two loaf of breads it can be called cheese sandwich or tomato sandwich or vegetable sandwich or whatever but that's the name of the sandwich the taste and the essence of the sandwich is between the two loaves of bread so first six chapters is of upper loaf middle one is the essence which is what we are going through and the last one will be gyana yoga as you rightly say uh so in the middle one krishna is describing bhakti yoga but he is so kind on arjuna and through arjuna to all of us that he will be walking us one step at a time allowing arjuna to question and then he will answer and again arjuna will question on our behalf and he will answer and thereby we all come to know slowly and steadily we cannot directly go to what krishna is saying in 18.66 sarva dharman parityajya mam ekam saranam vajo am tam sarva papeyo moksha isai masucha we cannot understand that directly so that's where slowly and steadily krishna is building up the platform for us to know what does krishna want us to tell where does krishna want us to go what is the goal which krishna wants us to achieve in this precious human form of life so in seventh chapter uh, krishna is telling himself 
the knowledge of the absolute means krishna is telling about himself and many many things we have seen uh, so many uh, verses we have read where krishna is emphasizing the yoga krishna says fix your mind on me uh, krishna says four types of man surrendered to me chaturvedi maam bhajante maam four types of people don't surrender unto me you know namam duskritam mora we will not go into that uh, Uh, finally in 7.30 7.27 i believe yeah no the 7.30 uh, he says sadhu bhuta di devam ma sadhi yagnam cha ye vidu prana prayana kale pi cha ma te vidur yukta chetasa so there is the translation of the i just want to give some background of how we came up to 8.2 those in full consciousness of me who know me the supreme lord to be the governing principle of the material manifestation of the demigods and of all methods of sacrifice which is uh, adi yagna uh, can understand and know me the supreme personality of god even at the time of death so there are three factors adi devam adi bhutam and adi yagna so adi yagna the translation is of the sacrifice let me see here adi yagnam adi adi devam then adi yagnam and governing all sacrifices yagna is sacrifice we all know that how one oblations and adi yagnam means of governing all sacrifices so the same adi yagnam is here in 8.2 if we read again starting word adi yagna katham kotra dehe smin matsudana so adi yagnam what is the translation here the lord of sacrifice and we will wonder why adi yagna is again coming up when krishna has already arjun krishna has already explained to arjuna in 7.30 which is the concluding verse of chapter 7 why is it coming up again that so we we will we'll go into that further before that we'll come to 8.1 so 8.1 Arjuna is asking five questions. Can anybody tell me what are those five questions? In eight point one. What Can is I... Brahman Lord? Correct. That's one. What is the self? Correct. What are the fruitful activities? Correct. What is this material manifestation? Mm-hmm. And what are the demigods? Five. Very good. So, what is Brahman? That's the first question. That means who is Who is the soul or super soul? What is Brahman? What is the self, which is the Atma? What is the self? What are the fruitive activities, which is karma? What is this material manifestation, which is prakriti? And what are the demigods? Uh, please explain to me. Five questions. Arjuna is asking, and then in this verse 8.2, Arjuna is asking two questions. Can anybody tell me what are the two questions? Who is the Lord of the sacrifice? Correct. How does he live in the body? Very good. The two. So total, there are seven questions. Uh, the the the, se- the second question here uh, in eight point two is how can those engaged in devotional service know you at the time of death? So who is the Lord of Sacrifice and how does he live in the body? Is the first question. The second one is how can those engaged in devotional service know you at the time of death? Set two questions. Total five plus two seven questions. These, uh, in fact, eight questions because uh, the, the the third one is how how does he live in the body? So total eight questions. Five plus three eight questions. Out of eight questions, the seventh questions five and two five of the eight point one and the first two is the Lord of Sacrifice and how does he live in the body? Krishna is answering in the two next verses, which is 8.3 and 8.4. So seven questions are answered by Krishna in only two verses. The eighth question, and what is the eighth question? And how can those engaged in devotional service know you at the time of death? Very, very important question for all of us to understand. not only understand even to realize that what does arjuna ask and why does he asking because he is asking on behalf of all of us why is he asking 
how can those engaged in devotional service know you at the time of death and uh, krishna is so kind to answer this eighth question uh, from the uh, the 8.6 onwards so four and five are, are dedicated to answering the seven questions the eighth question is expanding and we can see here the, in 3 and 4 he has answered seven questions in 5 and 6 5 onwards he is answering eight questions 5 and 6 anta kale cha mame vas maran muktva kalevram ya prayati samad bhavam yati nastyantra sansaya and the next one yam yam vapi smaran bhavam yajanti kalevram kalevram tam tam e veiti kaunteya sadartat bhav sadartat bhav bhavita so 5 and 6 is dealing with the eighth question how does a person engaged in devotional service know you or remember you at the time of death now we will come to first why krishna why arjuna is asking adhi yagna question in 8.2 when krishna has already ans- answered it in 8.7.30 it's because there are more details that there are context and more details to be revealed by krishna to arjuna and therefore he arjuna is asking again and just for his own clarification that what is this yagna purusha what is the lord of sacrifice who is the lord of sacrifice and how does he he means the lord of sacrifice live in the body o madhusudana so arjuna is asking for further details because the whole of bhagavad gita is nothing but questions and answers so arjuna questions krishna answers again further doubt arises krishna again answers again further doubt arises likewise Krishna is giving more details on the Lord of Sacrifice, which we saw in the first para. And we have already studied. Can anybody tell me who is the Lord of Sacrifice? Krishna. Krishna. Krishna or Vishnu. Krishna. We have studied that in chapter 2, 3, very elaborately described that any any sacrifice we do is for the benefit of Vishnu. Pleasing Vishnu. Ultimately, all oblations when we do Swaha, we give it, we oblations are to the Agni and Agni, through Agni it is, you know, demigods are nothing but the, they will pass it on to the, to, so ultimately it reaches Krishna. So, Lord of Sacrifice is Vishnu or Krishna himself. And uh, here uh, Krishna explains that uh, the purport says, Prabhupada, the Lord of Sacrifice may refer to either Indra or Vishnu. Yes, to Indra also there are lots of sacrifices. In fact, one of the uh, one of the main theme of Govardhan Leela, you know Govardhan Leela, where we where there is uh, sacrifice is done for, to please Indra in uh, Vrindavan. Um, this, um, there is a, there has been a lot of uh, every year there has been sacrifice given by the Vrajavasis to the Lord uh, through Govardhan Hill. So, Govardhan Hill is worshipped and Vrindavan, the Vrajavasis helps. And Vrajavasis will be uh, doing a big sacrifice to worship Lord Indra. And Indra, uh, year after year, receiving those sacrifices, Krishna was wondering that why is this happening. And then we all know, we won't go much into that, but Krishna told Nanda Maharaja that we should not be worshipping Indra, we should be worshipping Govardhan Hill and the cows and the Brahmanas. So, Nanda Maharaj obviously says that, no, we have been doing that. He is the Lord of uh, rain and how will we sustain our... Because we are all Vaishyas, we depend on the agriculture. Without rain, we can't do farming and how will we sustain? And that is where uh, Krishna says, gives very many reasons why we should be worshipping Govardhan because he supplies uh, to the cows, pasturing, uh, he gives the shelter and everything. Hare Krishna. So, ultimately, it was decided that, okay, we will stop from this year worshipping Indra. And then we know all Govardhan Lila took place, Indra got wild, and so that is a sweet pastime. But in short, Indra is also called Lord of Sacrifice. So, the first line, Lord of Sacrifice, may refer to 
either Indra or Vishnu. And as chapter 3 says, Vishnu is the ultimate benefactor or beneficiary of all the yagnas we do. And by yagnas, what we mean in chapter 3, very elaborately it was described, is that any prescribed duty according to our varna and ashrama is yagna. At the same time, the yuga dharma of Kali Yuga, like in, in Treta Yuga, there were actual yagna kund and havan, and the yagna was the main uh, medium of worship. Like in, in Satya Yuga, it was uh, meditation, in Treta Yuga, it was yagna havan, in uh, the Dwapar Yuga, it is great deity worship, and in Kali Yuga, what is that? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Bo. Thank you so much. So that is the Sankirtan Yagna, which is the Yuga Dharma. So when we do our prescribed duty according to the Varna and Ashrama we are in, we are said to be performing what? Yagna. Yagna. So Sankirtan is also Sankirtan Yagna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to propagate the the, the the holy name of the Lord in every nook and corner through Sankirtana movement or Sankirtana Yagna. So that was uh, a little bit about Yagna. So we go to the next line. Vishnu is the chief of the primal demigods. Now you will ask, no wait, we said Vishnu is Krishna, right? Just now we said Vishnu is Krishna. How, how come the demigods come in? But we, we hear Prabhupada is referring to Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesh. And the, uh, so Vishnu is the chief of the primal demigods. Uh, because ultimately he is Krishna himself. So when Krishna is to Bhagavan Sri. Including Brahma and Shiva. And Indra is the chief of the administrative demigods. So uh, we all know that Krishna does not come directly to do anything. It is not required of him. Uh, to do anything, but he entrusts the task of administering all the planets through the medium of demigods. So he entrusts to Indra the function of rain, Varuna, you know, the fire, the, the, the moon for the vegetables, all those things are entrusted to different, different demigods to administer the different portfolios for administration of the uh, universe, which is, when, this is one of them, planet Earth. Both Indra and Vishnu are worshipped by Yagna performances, we have seen that. But here Arjuna asks, who is actually the Lord of Yagna sacrifice and how the Lord is residing within the body of the living entity? Here is a good point. Good, good point. So, when Arjuna is asking who is Lord of Yagna, that is established as Vishnu already. But, the next question is, how the Lord is residing within the body of the living entity? How does Lord decide? Can anybody tell me who is residing in our heart? Paramatma. Only Paramatma? Atma. Atma and Paramatma. Both. So first is Atma, second is Paramatma. And the Paramatma who is residing in our heart, what is the other name of him? Shiro Daksai. Rebo, Vishnu. Now we have already studied that, you know, uh, Karan Daksai Vishnu is Mahavishnu, he is the ca cause of all causes. From him emanates the Karbo Daksai Vishnu. Uh, the, from, the, from his lotus, you know, the lotus flower emanates the, the Brahma takes the birth. And from uh, Garbo Daksai Vishnu uh, emanates Kara, uh, the Kshiro Daksai Vishnu. And Kshiro Daksai Vishnu is the one who enters into each and every universe, each and every uh, atom, each and every uh, living, chara, achara is the word used, either chara means uh, moving or achara means fixed, each and every atom, including the stones, where Kshirodaksai is entered. So, human beings, beasts, birds, living entities, along with Atma, there is Paramatma, who is called Kshirodaksai Vishnu. So, uh, the answer of uh, Arjuna's question, how does he live in the body is that he lives in our heart next to Atma as Paramatma. And what are the two main functions of, of Paramatma? Haribol. And second one? Sorry? The two functions. First is witnessing. Very nice. 
Sorry? No. Yeah, he listens, of course. He, Mataji, he will know what we are going to think in advance. We will think, but he will know that what we are going to think in advance. So he not only listening, he knows in and out what it is. He's said, he's, he, 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 he is pervading everywhere. So yes, but he listens. So one is witnessing. What is the second one? He's, uh, he's the one operating the entire body. Yes, that, that's true. As Mataji said, he listens. He is controlling everything. The second, second one. Okay. So uh, the the Sanskrit word for what you said is upatrista. And the second one is Anumanta. Anuma, Anumanta is nothing but sanction. So, Paramatma, the Lord of Sacrifice residing in our heart, is Kshirodaksai Vishnu. And what are his two main functions? We have said Upadrashta and Anumanta. Upadrashta means, Trashta means to see. Or, means, as you rightly said, witness. So, Upadrashta means he is witnessing each and every activity of us. Not only uh, activities, but even as Mataji says, listening. Before we think, he knows that he is going to think like this. Before we do any, any action, he knows that we are going to do this action. Any any manasa vacha karma, either by mind we think, vacha we speak, he will know in advance that we are going to speak, or karma, he knows that we are going to do this. And that he will sanction but before that, he will be upadrasa, he will be witnessing. So he is doing two things. One is witnessing us and the second one is sanctioning us. Now we wonder that why, why is this thing happening to me? Why am I doing like this? Why people are behaving like this to me? Why my this, uh, you know, the, 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 the material affairs are not in order, all those things. Do not blame ourselves. Let us... We know that very, very nice verse, right? Karmaniya vadikaraste maafale sukhadachana. Where Krishna says that you do your karma. You've got a right to perform your duties. But you are not, you, you are not entitled to the fruits of your action. And the second line of that says that do not uh, understand yourself to be the cause of the results of the activities what you do. I'll repeat the second line. That's where the context is. Second line of that word's translation is, do not think yourself to be the cause. Cause of what? Cause of the results of activities what you do. And why is it related to the second function of Anumanta? Because whatever, and, uh, we, whatever we are doing is after the sanction of Krishna. Now, we say that, okay, Prabhu, you say we, we, whatever we are doing is after the sanction of Krishna. What about if I am doing wrong? Prabhu and Mataji, whenever we are doing wrong, uh, I want you to raise your hand if what I am going to say is correct. Is anybody saying from within that don't, 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 and still the modes of material nature will override and still we do it. Am I right or wrong? Everybody is raising hand. That voice from coming from within is Chaitya Guru. We said that Chaitya Guru is residing in everybody's heart. In, in our, our discussion, it's called Kshirodaksai Vishnu. And there is always a voice, always, which we hear. That don't do this. You know, we, the three modes of material nature will force you to do some certain things. It could be anything. But that voice from within is always heard. That don't do, no, no, I won't, I, I want to eat this gulab jamun, I'm hungry. Don't do, you are diabetic. No, no, I want to eat. I will take those pills, what is it called? Uh, pen, insulin. insulin. I will have that, but let me have gulab jamun. Now that voice is saying, man, you are diabetic. This is not for you. But you will, uh, insulin, I, but let me take. Why do we do that? And, that is because of the three modes of material nature, because it's again a big topic, you know, Rupa Goswami says in Nectar of Insulin, Jiva Vegam, Vacho Vegam, Manasa Kroda Vegam. There are lots of forces. And then Krishna also answers that, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
kamaesa krodha esa rajoguna samudbhava krishna says these things mahasana mahakumbh these things are kind of a force to you due to the three modes of material nature and kama esa krodha is basically two things krishna is attributing why people are forced to do something which they don't want to do first is kama kama esa kama means lust kama esa krodha esa second is krodha so when your when your lust or desires lust means excessive desires no they, they let us not restrict lust to men and women that's also one of the prime but lust means if i love my cell phone and if if it is scratched or broken or lost oh my god there is what happened to my cell phone why are you lamenting because you are excessively attached to that gadget called cell phone anything and everything so and and when the when the when our desires are not fulfilled what happens can anybody tell me anger krodh and this is you don't need to read the books your own life will give you the answer that when something don't go the way you expected it to go you get angry and everybody gets angry it's 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 because krishna said that yes arjuna kama esa krodha esa rajoguna samudbhava then mahasano mahapapma vaidya nai mai varanyam mahasano mahapap mahapapma means what pap pap means everybody knows sin mahapap mahasano mahapapma vaidyane mai varana you need to control or or bring this greatest enemy you need to defeat by uh, controlling your mind by uh, practice abhyasana to konte vairagya cha guhyati you need to control your mind by a practice and vairagya but the cause of krishna is revealing that cause of this thing is kama is a krodesh so the point was we we tend to to do certain things without or, or rather i would say we tend to do certain things as if somebody is forcing us to do and there was a voice coming and we override no 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 let me eat that gulab jamun that chaitya guru is telling us every and, and, and i i remember paripan guru saying he is a shameless friend i i love that analogy you know if if the two friends it's our day, day to day experience when there are two close friends and one friend tries to ignore the other one the other says what he observes and again he ignores what okay then the next time the second friend meets the first friend first friend will do what ignore why because we have that tendency to react and reciprocate that is the difference between us and krishna krishna as i said unconditional love there are no strings attached krishna is loving us unconditionally whether we look at him we don't look at him whether we worship him we don't worship him krishna will continue to love us unconditionally so uh, the point was krishna is residing in our heart as shiro that said is no as chaitya guru and the analogy what i heard earlier is that krishna is a shameless friend now in our example the second friend is reciprocate reacted right he, he also you know like yesterday you ignored me i will ignore you krishna is not like that now it is described in the shastras that atma and parmatma are seated on uh, are, are compared to two birds seated on one branch where atma the the, the bird is constantly trying to do activities and and trying to enjoy the fruits of the trees whereas parmatma who is little abo is watching constantly on him but what is this atma is doing he is not looking at parmatma at all krishna wants to look at me look at me non stop this bird is constantly busy eating and enjoying the fruits of material of material realm now so these two friends atma and parmatma krishna wants us to look at him and we are not looking at him still krishna will say will give every single day when when the sun sets and when we wake up early again in the morning krishna gives us one more chance 
isn't it? In sleep, do we have any control over sleep and whether we wake up? Can anybody tell me, is there any guarantee that we will wake up next day? Everybody is nodding. There is no guarantee. Who wakes us up? Krishna. Why? Because he is, a, as, as the analogy says, he is a shameless friend. We, as, as, as the jiva, the atma, do not want to look at Krishna. However, Krishna day in and day out is giving us one more chance, one more day, one more day that please look at me. Not in this janam, next janam. Again, please look at me. Please worship me. Madhya Imam Namaskurum. Please worship me. Become my devotee. Become my... Uh, worship me. And, and, and we are not. We are not. So, Krishna, in our analogy, is a shameless friend. The other friend in Mandan example will react, but Krishna will not. Why? Because that is where the unconditional, that word is very important. Unconditional. Without any strings attached, Krishna says, come. And he says, Aham Bija Pradapita. So, we are all the sons of Krishna. He is the father. Who, which father wouldn't want the son uh, to look at him, to obey him, because father is guiding the son. Same way, Chaitya Guru seated within our heart as Lord of Sacrifice, as Arjuna is saying, is constantly guiding us. And we tend to override his things. But, but whenever we, we, we obey him, then, then we feel happy. Many times we feel bliss also, right? But it's not one side of the coin. We, 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 when, when, say, for example, we are doing Kirtan, beautiful Kirtan. And Kirtan means power. Not, we are not talking of musical instruments or harmonium. Or music. Kirtan means power. Krishna is power, grai, chanardana. What was Prabhupada doing? Just on a harmonium, he was singing alone, right, Prabhu? He was, he, was, he was enjoying in that Yadra, the Damodar temple, enjoying. He, we have seen many videos where he is just, you know, on the harmonium. There is no rhythm, nothing, but he is. Why Krishna is listening to such purity? is because Krishna is Bhava Krai Janardana. So that Kirtan done with Bhava, we really, we, we so many, not all the time we get absorbed in that Kirtan. And why, the, why, why is that? Because... Chaitya Guru or Shirodak Sai Vishnu or the Lord of Sacrifice seated in our heart is also getting happy. And that happiness is nothing but converting into bliss. Happiness and bliss, there's a difference. Happiness is temporary. Adhyanta Vanta Kauntaya. There is a beginning, middle and end. But bliss is eternal. So that bliss we, momentarily we, we it's not that it, it non-stop we we experience, but we do experience that, isn't it? Is, is that correct? We do experience sometimes. Now, that is the Chaitya Guru. Why, why we are getting happy? Because we have aligned our, ourselves with the Chaitya Guru, with the requirement of living, with the expectation of living, that you look at me, you surrender to me, you, you worship me, and you glorify me. So that is that was in short for Lord of Sacrifice. Then Prabhupada goes again. Arjuna addresses the Lord as Madhusudana because Krishna once killed a demon named Madhu. Yes, we all know. We won't go there. Uh, he killed a demon called Madhu. Actually, these questions, which are of the nature of doubts, should not have arisen in the mind of Arjuna because Arjuna is a Krishna conscious devotee. Why is Arjuna asking these questions? Krishna says, Krishna certified, not says, you are my friend and you are my devotee. Krishna said already. So if Krishna is a, uh, sorry, to Arjuna, if Arjuna is a devotee, and we all know that he is a self-realized soul, he, 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 he doesn't need to know anything. Still he is asking, but that is for our benefit. Through the medium of Arjuna, we are getting answers from Krishna. So, uh, therefore, those doubts like, are like demons. Since Krishna is so expert in killing demons, Arjuna here addresses him as Madhusudana so that Krishna might kill the demoniac doubts that arise in Arjuna's mind. And 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 we also get many, many doubts as we progress in our life. Every step of the way there are questions, there are doubts, there are there is lack of confidence, there is uh, confusion, there is illusion, there is lot of Lot of factors we, we encounter in our daily life. So, Madhusudana being a demon, uh, Krishna killed demon and therefore, uh, 
Arjuna is addressing Madh Madhusudana. Everywhere in Bhagavad Gita, you will notice Arjuna will say, uh, Krishna will address to Arjuna, O Partha, O Mahabaho. All those uh, uh, connotations have got meaning. And same way when Arjuna addresses Krishna, Madhusudana, Gudakesa, there are meanings there in context to what the, the sloka is. Next. Now here is what I wanted to come. I don't know whether this spoke was meant. Anyway, 6.15. Uh, 15 minutes more. So, th we now come to the main question, which is the eighth question uh, in this uh, series of two verses. And how can those engaged in devotional service know you at the time of death? Very, very important question. This is the question which is asked by Parikshit Maharaj to Sukadev Goswami. There are four questions, but one of the questions is, what is the duty? What are the two main questions? Can anybody tell me? Two main questions. What is the aim of life? Very good. Yeah. And? And uh, uh, how do we remember Krishna at the time of death? Uh, or in other words, what are the duties Duty. of a person who is about to die? What a wonderful question which is applicable to all of us. Do we know that we have got one more breath left? Do we know? Yes. One more breath? Yes. No. Everybody is agreeing. We don't know we, we, that we have got one more breath left. And therefore, while, while I am on that topic, we should be chanting the holy name of the Lord with that consciousness that this is my last breath. If we chant that way, then it will be so intense and probably even offenseless. Because then we won't be thinking of anything else. We won't be divesting our um, consciousness. We will be non-stop. So we should be chanting the holy name of the Lord as if this is our last breath. So when we don't know that we are, we, we are not guaranteed that we are going to take the next breath, we don't know what is the span of our life. At least Parikshit Maharaj knew that he has seven days to live. And therefore, he left food, water, sleep, seven days non-stop, without eating and sleeping, he listened to Srimad Bhagavatam from Sukhdev Goswami. In fact, at the end of the fourth chapter, Sukhdev Goswami wanted to pause. Uh, uh, Parikshit Maharaj says, no, seven days to continue, non-stop. So, why is that? Because the ultimate goal Parikshit Maharaj wanted to achieve within those seven days. Now, that second question, which uh, there, there are four or five questions, very primary, but the one of the main question is, what is the duty of a person about to die? That is applicable to all of us. And to answer that question, Sukadeva Goswami from Canto 2 to Canto 12, the whole Bhagavatam is dedicated to that question. What is the duty of a person who is about to die? Through glorification, then there are incarnations, the glorification of the Lord, but then there are every instance, every episode, every incident happening in, in uh, Bhagavatam narrated has got a corner. Say, for example, Puranjan. We studied Puranjan, right? There are a lot of takeaways from that. Every incident uh, from Parikshit Maharaj life, from uh, Prahlad Maharaj life, from Dhruva Maharaj life, from Ambarish Maharaj life. Everywhere there are take, take home, you know, we, there are take, take takeaways. And therefore, this question is answered elaborately by Sukadeva Goswami throughout Bhagavatam. And Krishna is doing the same in Bhagavad Gita. That seven questions he answered only in two verses, 8.3 and 8.4. 8.5 and 8.6 onwards, he is answering only one question, which is the eighth question. What? And how can those engaged in devotional service know you at the time of death? Now that, of course, the answers will be given, the elaborated by the next classes. But uh, we should be giving the glimpse because we are on that very vital question. And anybody saying anything from here, we need to churn. We need to think over it. And then we need to try and implement that such that we imbibe the mood of Krishna and we follow his instructions. So what is Krishna saying in 
in uh, 8.5 he says anta kale cha mame vas maran muktva kalevaram ya prayati samad bhavam yati nastyatya sansaya anta kale cha and here the the word used is prayana kale cha that's why i wanted to refer to 8.5 prayana kale cha what is the transliteration of prayana kale cha at the last moment right i mean adusudana prayana kale at the time of death prayana kale is at the time of death that's a trans we, we know the meaning but we wanted to have the exact transliteration at the time of death and what is the transliteration of antakale cha we know antakale is at the time of death that we know but let's see the transliteration antakale at the end of life so meaning is the same antakale cha at the end of life prayana kale cha is uh at the time of death now when we don't know how much we are going to live uh we should start we should use krishna says you know that use your spiritual intelligence he studied that use your spiritual intelligence we are we have sai atma ka buddhi intelligence we all have that okay if somebody is attacking we need to defend if we are hungry we eat uh we we do studies this is all without intelligence not possible but that intelligence is material and that that will lead us only to achieve material fruits but that is not the goal of life because you can be phd you can be ceo of a company you can be like steve jobs apple ceo but ultimately when he or she passes away everything is left here without any it goes to the heirs anything did that person who earned this who, who invested his whole life did he took a single cent with him no whether it is he is a pauper or he is a billionaire everything you have to leave here because that is material and that is not the goal of life we should be using spiritual intelligence to acquire what to acquire something which will come with us either if next birth is human birth that's fine or it could be animal birds beast whatever uh, whichever you need but it should come with us and then 6.41 6.42 we already studied you know suchinam simitam gehe that nothing goes in vain swalpam apyasa dharmasya nothing goes in vain uh, whatever you have studied whatever you have practiced whatever you have achieved the percentage of success in bhakti is credited to your account permanently here the material wealth would be left aside and you will go alone but spiritual credits what we call pious credit spiritual uh, progress if we have done 19% in this life in the next life we will start with 20% guaranteed because 6.41 42 confirms that we won't go into that because we don't have time but point is we should be practicing uh, bhakti yoga worshiping krishna knowing that whatever i am doing is not going to go in west and that will ultimately uplift our soul that will give us an opportunity suchinam simatam ke probably we will be taking birth in the righteous family or an aristocratic family we will be given all the uh, facilities to start where we left off so ultimately uh, we need to know uh, that we should apply the spiritual intelligence to do whatever uh, we are supposed to be doing for achieving the goal of life which is krishna prema or uh, going back to home back back to god head now but in that process there are problems and what are the we uh, we all face this and why i am elaborating this is because that will help us accelerate the process of achieving the spirituality so we all know that uh, you know whatever we do uh, attracts uh, karmic reactions what goes around comes around right uh, you do something good you get entitled to enjoy the results of that you do something bad you will be punished so you have to suffer now in that process of enjoyment or suffering if our life span ends whatever is the destiny then we have to take another birth we all know that these are basics we all know that and in the process of enjoying our 
pious people, piety practice, or in the process of suffering the the karmas, the bad bad things, whatever we have done, we again do something more in that process, and we accumulate karmas. Now, karmas. To be brief, there are Sanchita Karma and Prarabdha Karma. Sanchita Karma are those, just analogy that the quiver, you know, the bow and arrow, the quiver, whatever arrows are there in the quiver is called Sanchita Karma. It's not yet used. But once the arrow is on the bow and is released, now it will achieve the target. That's Prarabdha Karma. That means those karmas, those Sanchita Karmas, which are fructified, becomes Prarabdha Karma and, and just to, today morning I was listening to one Bhagavatam where it was elaborately said that Prarabdha Karma nobody can stop because they are fructified. They are the arrows which has left above. It will hit the target. Nobody can. Sanchita Karma, yes, it, they, it, they can be wiped out. Now Krishna says, what is the proof in Bhagavad Gita 18.66? Sarva Dharman Paritya Mami Kam Saranam Vaja Moksai Sami Masu Aham Tvam Sarva Pape Bho Moksai Sami Masu Aham Tvam Sarva Pape Bho All the sins of yours would be eradicated by me provided you do take Saranagati Mam Ekam Saranam Vaja you surrender unto me and I will make sure. And Masucha, I, I love that when Krishna says, of this there is no doubt. Or uh, it is guaranteed, you know. There are so many verses Krishna uses uh, as a guarantee. And this is one of Masucha, don't worry. It is Krishna saying that if you surrender to me, leaving aside all the religion, you know, Sarva Dharman Dharma is leaving aside all the Sarva Dharman Paritya, Mame comes from, then Aham Tvam Sarva Pape, Moksai Sin Master. I will vanquish or remove all the sins. Now, which sins is he referring? Sanchita Karma. So, uh, I just heard this morning that uh, when we are born in this material body, we are, Krishna selects those Sanchita Karma and Prarabdha Karma and gives it to us. That is why we are in this material. Material body is 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 a we, we are in jail, we are in prison. We we are imprisoned in this material realm. So to, to get the material body, whether human being or bird or beast is all is, is we, we, we are here to to enjoy or suffer. So it's a it's a prison house, it's a, it's a punishment. So Krishna gives us Sanchita and Prarabdha Karma. But then there are Sanchita and Prarabdha Karma also left out. Now when we do so Bhajante Maam, when we do worship of Krishna and we surrender to him, Maame comes Ranam Bhaja, Krishna will make sure that he removes what? He removes first the Sanchita and Prarabdha Karma which were left out before because those were to to, those were to fructify in our next birth, we have to take birth again. But whatever Sanchita and Prarabdha, he, he, has, he will already destroy that one. But we are born with Sanchita and Prarabdha Karma. So the quiver in the, the, the arrow in the quiver is Sanchita Karma and the arrow on, on the bow is Prarabdha Karma. Krishna cannot and you will have to suffer the Prarabdha Karma because that is fructified, that is matured. There is no way we can escape that one, Prarabdha Karma. But Krishna can destroy the Sanchita Karma. Now, why I'm saying this, this is irony of us and this is from my little realization. Uh, we all will agree probably because we have experienced this, that whenever we are trying to enjoy or suffer, we are reacting with the material world, right? And when we are reacting either as, as in the office or in the society or wherever, uh, we are uh, doing activities. All the action has got an equal and opposite reaction. When we are trying to enjoy or suffer the Prarabdha Karma, the one in the arrow, not the Sanchita. The quick, these arrows are not yet used. That's Sanchita Karma. That will, if you do not uh, worship Krishna, definitely this, this is, it's a, time bomb. It is clinging. This arrow will come on the bow and they become fructifying. You have to suffer or 
But so far as it is, it is in the quiver, there is a chance that if you worship without incurring additional karmas, without incurring additional karmas, then and if you worship non stop as, 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 as Krishna consciousness, you know, we say self realized person. So when our anasas are gone and we, we go in the ladder, then Krishna will definitely masuche. He says, Don't worry, I will remove all the all the papa, all the reactions to the to your sinful actions, I will eradicate. And that means Krishna will remove this Sanchita Karma, which is in our example, quiver, the arrows in the quiver. And also those which are Sanchita and Pralata Karma, which are not, which didn't come with the body. So, the point is, while enjoying or suffering, we should not be incurring additional karma. Otherwise, what happens? When we incur those good or bad karmas, you are putting one more arrow in the weaver. And that arrow is a time bomb. It's a, it's, it's, it is waiting for to be fructified. So ultimately, we will be in the cycle that we removed two arrows, but we added five arrows. Where are we? We are plus three. So whatever we came with, we added three more. We again, we do removed one, we added two. What are we have plus one? So that should not the Sanchita karma should not increase. So, in other words, point to tell you is that Prabhupada Mataji is life is a preparation for death. Life is a preparatory period for the final exam. Final exam is death. And what is the duration of final exam generally, Prabhu? Three hours. Three hours. For us, it can be any second. And 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 the and Prabhupada says here that when when at the time of death through the example of Kulisekhara, at the time of death, it is described in the Sastras, not to scare you, but these are Sastras that the pain in the body is like thousands of scorpions are biting you at a time. If one scorpion bites, God forbid nobody nobody is be is getting bitten by a scorpion, but one scorpion bite is enormous. Terrible pain, one scorpion bite. How about thousands of scorpions biting at a time? You will have your bile, you will have your mucus, you will be coughing, your throat will be chopped, you cannot eat, you cannot sleep, you cannot drink, you cannot speak, you cannot see. All the indriyas are winding down. So ultimately that death experience, how can you remember Krishna when every organ of your body is getting failed, is failing? How can? It's next to impossible. But Krishna says, Masucha. There are two main things I, I want to emphasize for our own comfort. One is that 18.60, Krishna says, Masucha, I will take care of you. And if he removes the reactions to our karmas, then that's it. And we, yay, that's what we want. Because we provided we have not added more, more arrows in our quiver, that means. We have not added at the same time Krishna is removed. So that is one. And second consolation I want to give you is from Padma Purana. Amarendra Prabhu is described very nicely. From Padma Purana, there is a nice verse which says, the translation says that if you do not remember Krishna, as, as, as Arjuna is asking there, how can you remember, know you? How can a person in the devotion say, know you or remember you at a time of death? If you do not remember me, or if you are not in the position to remember me at the time of death, unfortunately, of course, still, I will remember you. <clears throat> I will make sure that you, 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 you will uh, recall me. You, I will remember you. I will relieve you from that, provided we have prepared for the final exam. And final exam, like a student does for one year, study for only three hours we need to do only for that one moment but what that the whole life we should be chanting worshiping krishna that's a sure here. sure it's a time so for questions it says whoever at the end of life quits his body remembering me mm -hmm. surely a time question right but then again previous to that you said if you're doing any sins you are adding <coughs> one more to the, the cure right so that yes. How does that coexist? Very nice question, Mataji. So we are all given free will, right, Mataji? Every soul, <coughs> excuse me, every soul has minute free will. Krishna has, 
we, we, we are infinitesimally smaller. So whatever Krishna quality, Krishna's quality, we have got small units. Now, we have got a minute free will. In that free will, we are given choice to take action of our liking. So, for example, these three hours of Sunday, five to eight, we are so lucky that we are here. We are not in the discotheque. We are not somewhere in cinema. We are here trying to glorify Krishna. That is the best use of the free will. So, using that free will, we should not be indulging in something which adds more arrows in the quiver. In other words, that's an easy way to say. In other words, we should not be accumulating more Sanchita Karmas. Because for sure, certain, know it that whatever you do will incur reactions. But then there are three types of karma. Karma, a karma and vikarma. Karma is the fruitive activities. A karma is, uh, is uh, Krishna consciousness again, activities. And vikarma is uh, those karmas which are against the scriptural injunctions. So that is what you were referring to. That what if we do something which is against scriptural and or which adds more karma. That is where our free will come. And, and if, if our, by misusing our free will, we still do those things, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's the ending which we don't want, which means we will keep on accumulating more arrows in our quiver or more sanchita karma. Thereby, punarati jananam, punarati maranam, chatare sayanam, you know, it is non-stop, then you will continuously be engaged in the cycle of birth, old death, disease and death. Continuously. And it's a never-ending cycle because in the process of clearing the enjoying or suffering, if you accumulate more, then you are always at two arrows have gone, five arrows have come. Where are you at? Net three more arrows. Now that will fructify. It's a time bomb. So it will it will come to, to haunt you when it fructifies. So that using that Vyavasaik Matabhutis, using the spiritual intelligence and using our minute free will in Krishna consciousness, we should be extremely careful not to accumulate more karmas. And that is in our advantage. Yes. Oh, one question. But, uh, one minute. Does that answer your question? Yes. But sometimes it's nice, right? Knowingly, unknowingly, we could accumulate some suffering. But, but you're answering is right. Like, it's always nice to Exactly. That's perfect. But yes. until unless we become hundred percent purified, we are not qualified to go back home. Exactly. Also. That's right. Yes. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Prabhu, one question. Yes. Prabhu, you <coughs> saying um, that Krishna will actually decide mm -hmm. uh, to give us the bucket of the karma, sanchit karma, prarabdh karma. How does Krishna decide, Prabhu? Because, because we are also saying. That Krishna would not interfere yeah. with our willingness. Krishna would not interfere even with our karma. The whatever karma we have accumulated, we have to go through the reaction. But then what is the Krishna conscious conscious will do is minimize that reaction. So instead of Mount Meru is coming into your head, yes. just as a muscle state is coming into your falling exactly. into your head. Exactly. So how does that work, Prabhu? Can you just explain this? Krishna will always see there are certain things which are inconceivable, Mother. We mm -hmm. The laws of karma are very intricate. We, yeah. we know by simple reasoning that what goes around comes around. But at the same time, we are all uniting in one family, um, as a one family unit. Did we decide that we should be in this family? No. Based Did on we? our karma, we can't. No? Yes. So based on our karma, we are given the bodies. We are given the family. We are given the atmosphere. If our liking in the previous birth was to enjoy some mundane things and we, we could be going into hogs and pigs body you know so ultimately laws of karma is is of course controlled by krishna but he, he doesn't interfere he doesn't interfere meaning thereby he will not interfere in our free will and that has got relation to what mataji says that in the process of enjoying or suffering what if we add more karmas then we add more arrows in our quiver for sure so it is for krishna and that is why we say causeless mercy sometimes Cause, why causeless we use, we use? Mercy, of course, endeavor and mercy, we are about to Damodar month, but, but mercy, of course, Krishna will give, but there are causeless mercy, which means I am not deserving this mercy. And still Krishna is kind enough to give me. That is called causeless. 
I haven't done anything. I don't consider myself deserving this mercy, these facilities, this Krishna consciousness, this atmosphere. But still Krishna will give. That is causeless mercy. So that is where Krishna will, Krishna will decide what what karmas to go with. And that is what we pray. We should, uh, Yisrael and Sardar Swami always says that become a prayerer. Always, his whole life is praying. Just pray to Krishna that I I, I surrender to you. I I, I, uh, I I take your name. I worship you. Uh, remove my anarthas. All these are prayers. Make me instrument of something which can be done to preach Krishna consciousness. Do not make me instrument to harm anybody. These are all prayers. And Radha Swami says that we should be the prayers throughout the life. And these are the prayers which we say that Krishna, knowingly or unknowingly, Mother, you said knowingly or unknowingly, I have accumulated so many karmas. Maybe in this life, even in this life, we don't remember what did we do 15 years before. Do we remember? No. So what about the previous janma? What about the millions and gazillions of janmas? We don't remember. You know, we don't remember. Because we don't remember, because we don't have any control over our karmas, because we don't know how much we have accumulated, we should be constantly praying to Krishna that Krishna knowingly or unknowingly, if at all I have got done something wrong, please relieve me. And thereby, with that state of humility, Pranada Pismichana, with that state of humility, if we constantly chant, what I said is prepare, life is a preparation. We prepare for that final exam called death. Then Krishna will definitely shower mercy. If not today, tomorrow. If not in this janam, next janam, next to next, whatever Krishna wishes. That's causeless mercy. We have to be genuine in our prayers. Very sincere. Very sincere. Prayer. We should become prayer. Prayer is the prayer which we offer. And the person who prays is called prayer. We should be pray like prayer and prayer. Prayer, we should be non stop become a prayer to ask Krishna to give his devotional service at the same time, remove one earth. At the same time, as Mataji says, what if we have accumulated? Only he can. Ma Sucha, he says, Aum Tvam Sarva Pape Gyo. Sarva Pape Gyo means what? Not only this, sorry, not only this one, anything. But that is what only when we surrender. And surrender means follow his instructions. So, does that answer your question, Mataji? Yes, sir. I have one question. Yes, sir. The same question Mataji asked. When we were at the end of the life, Fritz's body, remembering me alone, at once attained my nature. Of this, there is no doubt, right? So, remembering Krishna. But how do you relate this with Ajamla story? He didn't remember the Haribo. last time. Wonderful question. <laughs> oh, you are reading Bhagavatam now, I know. Very <laughs> well. Ajamila. I'm so happy. Yes, sir. So, very good question. So Ajamila called his son called Narayana. One, one uh, saintly person came to him and says that, okay, uh, you you name your son the last son. At the age of 80, he had so many sons. You may remember, you, imagine. But fortunately, because of the saintly advice of that saint, he said, you name your son, last son is Narayana. And, and because he was so much, he was the youngest boy and uh, too much attached to his son and that what, what will happen in our consciousness at the time of death whatever we have prepared throughout the life is what we will remember whether we are in coma whether we are in deathbed whatever condition we will remember only that thing which will which is practiced throughout the life so what Ajamila was doing is last so many years he was attached to his son called Narayana and he was calling his son because he couldn't suffer, he couldn't bear the pain of his death. And he says, Narayana, Narayana come. But Narayana means he's calling his son. But he is speaking the word Narayana. Narayana is nothing but Lord Krishna. And then and then he said that Krishna's name, paraphernalia, pastimes, leelas, and himself is none different. They are all the same. And that is why when we chant early in the morning in the Brahma Murta, we are directly associating with Krishna. It's a private appointment between us and Krishna. Why? Because Krishna's name is none different than Krishna. And therefore we enjoy chanting. Why do we enjoy? 
because we are associating directly with Krishna. And imagine unconditional love flowing, reciprocating between Krishna and us. All the anarthas would slowly and steadily go away. So, when he called Narayana, he is calling his son, but he spoke the word Narayana. And therefore, Yamadutas had to retreat. And uh, Vishnu Dutas had to come in. On that spot, that no, you, you, your jurisdiction is out because he called Narayana. But he says he is calling his son. No, it doesn't matter. Narayana is Krishna's name, another name. And he called out Narayana. And therefore, Prabhu Zanmati, this brings one more. Well, thank you for asking this question. We should all be intelligent enough to keep our sons and daughters' name, which is Sastra based. Which is Sastra based. Not Pinku and Chintu and Munnu and no, 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 no. <laughs> we should, I mean, I mean, it's it's a, it's a free will, right? To Mataji's question, free will. It's a free will given. So given a Rashi in the horoscope, you will say, okay, uh, I was given, for example, I was given K for my son's name. So I said, what? There is, it's a no-brainer. K for Krishna, and I, na I named my son Krishna. His name is Krishna, and daughter's name is Janvi. J J. So I said, what else? Ganga Janvi. Another name of Ganga is Janvi. Just as an example, not that I want to say for myself, but we should be intelligent. Why? And that is what it has got bearing with your question. That even if you name your son and daughter, which are Sastrik, which is connected to Krishna, probably you will call him or her out and probably Yamudutas will be defeated and Vishnu Dutas will take over. As Ajamila did. You know, and Ajaj. Yes, good question, Madhi. So, this body is called Pankaj. Pankaj, my karmic name is Pankaj. Okay, that is the boy. That is the name given by my father and mother, right? Or Gua. But that that refers to this material body. When you are first initiated, you are recognized as a soul. Of course, we are soul. We should know right from childhood. That's what Gita says. We are not this body. We are soul. But the the it is called uh, second second birth. First birth is by our mother and father, which is this material body. Twice born. Second, sorry, twice born. Twice born. Twice born. Twice born. The second born is by our Guru Maharaj. And Guru Maharaj on the first initiation, everybody should look for the initiation. First, second, etc. First initiation, Guru Maharaj will give you name, but it's not giving to. He's not giving to this body. Is giving to this soul. And what is the name of this soul seated in front of you? Is Pitambara Das. So I will be, I means the soul will be recognized by the name Pitambara Das. Like you are now Monika Mataji, but that's your karmic name. But if I want to address your soul, I still don't have that name because you have not initiated. This is where we should work for the initiation and get our and what Guru Maharaj will do. Guru Maharaj, when we fulfill the vows, what we take at the time of first initiation, Guru Maharaj in exchange promises us to take us back home, back to Godhead. Us means the soul. So we are referring to Pitambaradas. And one more thing, very interesting thing. And this soul called Pitambaradas, not this body, body will be burnt, that Pankaj is gone in the dust, but the soul called Pitambaradas, if liberated, will be in the in the shelter of our Guru Maharaj in that real, spiritual realm, because Guru Maharaj will be waiting for us, until the time, and in your question, what if we acquire more karmas, and Punarati Jananam, we are, we are continuously rotting in birth, or that disease, that wrote, you know, like a, like a rat in that circle, he doesn't go out, he is running, but he is not going, going nowhere, Likewise, if we are trapped, still Guru Maharaj will wait for that soul called Pitambaradas. Howsoever number of Chanmas we take, so far as we are following four regulatory principles, we are chanting 16 rounds and we are following his instructions, then Guru Maharaj has taken, given us promise that I will take you back home, back to Godhead, whatever time it takes. So Guru Maharaj will keep on coming back to reclaim that soul back to Godhead. What do you mean by coming back? So, see, Guru Maharaj also has got the uh, uh, finite number of years, right? But he will make sure that even in the next life, when wherever you are, 
that with soul for soul there is no limitation of time and space so we for us it is like yesterday today tomorrow limitation of time or space be, 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 be behind this wall what is happening i don't know limitation of space for soul in the spiritual realm there is no limitation of time and space it's conspicuous by its absence so they will find us wherever we are but not monica not pankaj pitambara does so he will look for pitambara the soul called pitambara and he will reclaim us back provided now we have learned our lesson that to your, to your, to your question that we have not added more karmas to while engine to 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 answer her question that uh, what happens if you know so ultimately we will go back home back to god at with the soul's name he will definitely claim us back so good will question will take responsibility for the second birth howsoever birth but that doesn't mean that we we keep on repeating the mistakes or we keep on uh, incurring more sinful uh, sinful actions which has got sinful reactions if we follow his instructions could be that our destiny was set for around 70 years and on the 70 the, the breaths as soon as we take birth the number of breaths are counted there is you can't change it unless a person commits suicide but then he goes to the coast but if the destiny is 70 years and we pass away and we have not finished the krishna concept we are not removed our ansar but sincerely we are do, doing krishna another birth will be given according to 6.41 42 in the aristocrat family in the conducive environment and you will be given second chance yes prabhu i am asking about the responsibility of guru maharaj in the second birth he 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 will he will again the, give you another chance he will again make sure that you come back home back to god without incurring additional karma because the atmosphere given to you is conducive now earlier in this pre this birth it was not conducive next birth it will be more conducive you will be born in aristocrat family righteous family brahmana family sept sila propada says in the purport of 6.42 when time permits just read that that uh, myself propada says that how oh, myself got a chance to to be born in in, in the most brahminical family Uh, which means he got the chance to start pre- pre- practicing krishna consciousness right from childhood when he was young his father used to go and uh, preach and do deity worship and therefore propada did his first rath yatra even when he was young with his small baby carts you know with his small krishna city seated and he did rath yatra why because he was given that con- body in a family which is conducive to practice krishna consciousness right, when right from birth so his guru maharaj would definitely claim him back to so that is the promise guru maharaj always gives for that and that's why guru maharaj gives the name to a soul not to the body very nice question to not to the body to the soul and guru maharaj will be after that soul until the soul goes back home back to god provided soul does not misuse the free will again very important while enjoying or suffering if we misuse our free will then guru maharaj will say sorry we i can't take your responsibility because we are not following the vows we are not going by what he is expecting of us and when we we don't we break our promises or vows to him then he says then you are on your own then we don't have his shelter that then we are in that birth or that disease and that brings me another question probably yes, so for example this time you have a guru maharaj okay and after the second birth you get initiated you which guru maharaj you would take in the second birth you get initiated and for that i have to take second birth prabhu how can i answer <laughs> I can answer what Prabhupada is saying in the Gita as it is, but I can't answer what is what is going to happen in second. But 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 essentially, spiritually, Guru Maharaj, as I told her, spirit Guru Maharaj is there, provided we are reciprocating with Guru Maharaj, following his instructions, not breaking. Even in the second birth, he will make sure that he will claim you back. So will he be like? Uh... Prabhu, can we can we have this last question because we are running late for the job? Yes, last question. So physically, he will be there in the second birth. Why not? Why not? Yeah. He'll be there physically. Why not? Like uh, uh, Prabhu Pada is the example. He is saying in that 6.41, 42 purport that I got the birth in a in a Brahminical family, and uh, the family was very right for practicing Krishna consciousness from the childhood. 
सो एंड देन ही गॉट दी गुरु महाराज एस भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर सो ऑलवेज If we reciprocate, then Guru Maharaj promises us to take us home back. Whatever time it takes, because that depends on our use or misuse of free will. For as per her question. But if any no no no, if any mistake happens, right? I mean, it happens, right? I mean, let's say even after initiation, mm -hmm. if we are not able to, uh, we are trying to follow, but let's say mistakes happen, mm -hmm. then what happens? There are two types of mistakes: intentional and unintentional. If it is unintentional, then there are price with us, which if you perform, then it will be eradicated. But if there are intentional mistakes, that also few chances. But then if you are repeating, that's a nama aprata to 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 do sinful activities on the strength of the holy name. One of the nama aprata. That will mean that you will not be getting the results of the chanting as much as you should be. So it will prolong your your stay in the material realm. You know the the somebody's strain is fast, somebody's strain is slow, somebody's pace of spirituality is fast, somebody's slow. So that will prolong, and probably if by destiny the life has ended by that time, you will have to take another birth either to enjoy or suffer. So it's it's a non-stop repeating cycle, provided we understand one thing that we don't need to accumulate more karmas. Then it will go away. Does that answer your question? Thank you so much. You, sorry, one, one minute, Prabhu. Prabhu was saying something. Oh, no, 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 you said. I think you answered it. Basically, in the comment, you, you answered it, but I'm still, I'm still saying it. Okay. So, the Guru, whether this life, next life, or any other life, Guru is always there because he's an unshot Prabhupada, he's Prabhupada's messenger. Exactly. So, Prabhupada's messenger in this life, next life, is beyond this realm. Mm -hmm. He's in a spiritual realm. Right. If not Prabhupada himself. Right. So, Swaminathan I Prabhu, there is no worry there whether the life is this life or next life. Once you are initiated by the Guru, the Guru is always there. Yes, he exactly. He will, he will definitely make sure that this soul called whatever name is given is reclaimed back. Correct. Provided we are in conformity with the vows we take. And then by destiny, if we have to, we have to take another birth, then so be it. But Guru Maharaj will be with us. So far as we are not limited. He will take us back. Sorry, just to, uh, just to add here, our destiny changes when we take shelter by Guru Maharaj. Right? Even, if, even though we may have to take millions of births, just by taking shelter of our Guru, our rekhas of our lives change. When we chant the holy name, the rekhas of our lives change. So many things change when we take up to the process of bhakti in a, in a steadfast manner. So the idea is when we take births <coughs> one after the other only because we accumulate karmas, when we take to the path of bhakti, there is no karma accumulation. So it's as simple as that. When you follow the path of bhakti, there is no new karma being created. That is why Prabhu is saying again and again, provided you follow the four regulated principles, provided you stick to the instruction which we So you're doing akarma, which means you're not going to get many, many births. You're going to go back to it. हरे कृष्ण वांछा कल्पतो रुद्यस्य कृपा सिंधु भी है वच्चा पतिता नाम पावने भी हो वैष्णव भी हो नमो नमः अनंत कोटि वैष्णव दिन दिखी जाए श्रीला प्रभु पाद की जाए ग्रंथराज श्रीमत् भगवत गीता की जाए नीताय गौर पे मनंदे हरि हरि थैंक यू सो मच इफ देर आर एनी शॉर्टकमिंग्स प्लीज फॉर गिव मी थैंक यू